Nearly everything is really interesting if you go into it deeply enough. When I first read this quote, it had a profound effect on me. My whole life was constantly motivated by the search of the miraculous. Moments of ecstasy, moments of higher truth, moments of high significance. When such moments failed to define my experience, life was engulfed by the mundane. But the mundane can often be just a fragment of our perception. Sometimes the miraculous can be found in the mundane and finding the miraculous in the mundane constitutes an inflection point in one's life. We are brainwashed uh, to believe that a good life is a life filled with constant stimulation, with a lot of highs and a lot of lows. But is it really that way? When we slow down, we notice things that seem elusive and outside the periphery of our consciousness. The world around us becomes an endless territory, ready to be explored. That's the best way to battle unknowing. And the person who made me shift my perception toward knowing and unknowing was no other than Richard Feynman. Richard Feynman was one of the most celebrated physicists of the previous century and a person known as the Great Explainer. Physics for him was a playground through which he could discover the world around him. As he said, in physics, the truth is rarely perfectly clear, and that is certainly universally the case in human affairs. Hence, what is not surrounded by uncertainty cannot be the truth. Feynman held uncertainty at the epicenter of his intellectual life. It is imperative, he wrote, to have uncertainty as a fundamental part of your inner nature. This kind of mindset is incredibly empowering. When the most brilliant minds feel comfortable with uncertainty, this clearly communicates that it is an attitude worth adopting. I can live with doubt and uncertainty and not knowing. I think it's much more interesting to live not knowing than to have answers which might be wrong. I have approximate answers and possible beliefs and different degrees of certainty about different things, but I'm not absolutely sure of anything, and the many things I don't know anything about. But I don't have to know an answer. I don't have. To, I don't feel frightened by not knowing things, by being lost in the mysterious universe without having any purpose, which is the way it really is, as far as I can tell. Possibly, it doesn't frighten. Flow is a transcendental state of being. Brain imaging shows that when in flow states, we actually switch off the part of the brain that gives us our sense of self. This part is called dorsolateral frontal cortex. It is the part of our brain that allows us to analyze and question our own behavior, which can be highly useful. Unfortunately, it also slows everything down because it means that all our decisions have to go through it and it can act as a creative barrier. By switching off this part, uh, we allow all our attention to go to the part we want to use without censorship or micromanagement. This results in quick reactions and uninterrupted productivity. Flow state can be achieved with any task and when reached, each task becomes a separate, transcendental experience. And so altogether, I can't believe the special stories that have been made up about our relationship to the universe at large because They seem to be too local, too provincial. The earth, he came to the earth. One of the aspects of God came to the earth, mind you. And look at what's out there. How can he, it isn't in proportion. Depth as a concept has troubled me for quite some time. But I came to the conclusion that depth is strongly associated with attention how concentrated you can be while investing your time in a specific task. What we choose to focus on and what we choose to ignore is defining the quality of our life. Skillful management of attention is the pinnacle of a good life. Our brains are the ones that construct our worldview based on what we pay attention to. Who you are, what you think, feel and do is the sum of what you focus on. Take a moment to pause and reflect on that sentence. Who you are, what you think, feel and do is the sum of what you focus on. If you decide to focus on a shallow interpretation of the world that doesn't bring any meaning to your life, you will effectively adopt a more shallow worldview. Our brains are very adaptable in order to help us uh, survive. Nowadays, we have a lot of freedom in choosing what our brains will adapt to. So consider for a moment the type of mental world constructed when you dedicate significant time to deep endeavors. There is gravity and a sense of importance inherent in depth. 
If you spend enough time in that state, your mind will understand your world as rich in meaning and importance. When you're thinking about something you don't understand, you have a terrible, uncomfortable feeling called confusion. It's a very difficult and unhappy business. And so most of the time, you're rather unhappy, actually, with this confusion. You can't penetrate this thing. Now, is it, the confusion is because we're all some kind of apes that are kind of stupid working against this, they're trying to figure out to put the two sticks together to reach the banana, and we can't quite make it, the idea. And I get that feeling all the time that I'm an ape trying to put the two sticks together. So I always feel stupid. Once in a while, though, every, the, the, banana, the sticks go together on me, and I reach the banana. Feynman was notorious for using peculiar methods to solve complex problems and also for constantly challenging people. In his New York Times best-selling book, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, he tells a story of going into the mathematics department of MIT and challenging people to explain him difficult concepts as simply as they could. He then managed to explain the concept and reach the same conclusions as they did. His point was that the ability of a person to simplify difficult topics favors both the teacher and the student. The Feynman technique was invented by well-known blogger Scott Young. Scott was inspired by Richard Feynman's method of learning and created this technique so he can understand difficult topics better. It is a two-step, quite straightforward uh, technique that can be used to learn any topic. I am going to use the technique to explain the concept of flow since it is one of my favorite topics. In our case, I will use the explanation of flow as it is uh, described in the Wikipedia entry. In positive psychology, flow, also known as the zone, is the mental state of operation in which a person performing an activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement and enjoyment in the process of the activity. In essence, flow is characterized by complete absorption in what one does. Named by Mihai, Csikszentmihalyi, the concept has been widely referenced across a variety of fields, though has existed for thousands of years under other guises, notably in some Eastern religions. Achieving flow is often colloquially referred to as being in the zone. The concept here is kind of simple, so I don't think that it needs to be read more than once in order to be understood. If we had to deal with scientifically complex concepts that would include formulas and graphs, we might have needed to spend more time to properly grasp it. For the sake of practicality, we will keep it simple. For a five-year-old, the terms positive psychology, being in the zone and energized focus would most probably be perceived as unknown terms. That means that we need to find even simpler ways to describe it. A great way to go about doing so would be this. You know how sometimes people seem to perform very well and we feel that they are superhumans. It happens with athletes when they outperform their opponents. It happens with singers when they give incredible performances and it happens with writers when they produce amazing literature. This depends to some extent on experience but it is also a result of a process called flow. Flow is the state where your mind can achieve great things. It is the time when you ignore all external distractions and you are able to give your full attention only to one task. This helps your brain understand information faster and perform extremely well in the task you are focused on. This is a pretty straightforward explanation of an unknown topic that can really make the topic stick. I use simple examples like the ones of athletes, singers and writers and the brain immediately makes associations with relevant concepts. Richard Feynman used to say, I, a universe of atoms, an atom in the universe. We feel so small and insignificant in this vast place we call reality. Modern societies seem unable to offer the level of meaning demanded by our complicated nature. We seek and we find, and we seek again, and we find again. In the end, we rarely discover answers that can truly satisfy our curiosity. The next question is bigger than the last one and the lack of uh, proper explanations creates an intellectual and spiritual void. Making better sense of reality can make us feel less insignificant and that's something worth fighting for. Hi guys, uh, this video is sponsored by Brilliant. As you know, I rarely do sponsored videos but Brilliant is such an interesting platform and I couldn't refuse when they approached me. I think that if Richard Feynman was alive, he would definitely enjoy Brilliant's approach to knowledge acquisition.
I have tried many methods of learning over the years, but I'm almost certain that the best way to learn anything is by doing it yourself, especially by learning interactively. Interactive learning helps you learn way more effectively than just watching lecture videos. Brilliant's platform is designed around this idea. Take for instance this incredible course on the physics of the everyday. In this course, you can learn intuitively concepts like nuclear energy, hurricanes, axe throwing, even how toilets work. The structure is great and you can progress from one topic to the next gradually and seamlessly. I got hooked and I was playing around with the course for hours. I'm sure that Brilliant is ideal for students who want to deeply understand uh, STEM-related topics, but it is also perfect for every curious human who wants to delve into interesting concepts like astrophysics, quantum objects, logic and electricity and magnetism. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash metamorphosis77. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium uh, subscription. Enjoy. Again, thanks for watching. See you soon.